future. The future. The future. I, How I, do you even I talk about the future? <sighs> the night's predictions. laser gun. Predictions, you know what I mean? Ooh, ooh, that, keep that on the oh, low. low. They'll have a back order for years. For that. <laughs> whoops. Um, hmm. I don't so, know. There, Mr. Yeah. Knight. Yeah. What do you think about um, the future? Well, um, it's wild, dude. Like, it's, it really is wild. Like Stars and quasars. Um, It's just like everything like we talked about like what's happened in our life with with the internet or you know different things you know what i mean but we really are about to experience probably the biggest shift and change in manufacturing and engineering that probably has happened since the industrial revolution you know what i mean um uh, yeah if not more you know and the Probably, way it is amazing all that stuff uh, it's like we're just accelerating so much faster um yeah well, we've mean, seen it in our lifetime but now oh. yeah i mean you figure like in our lifetime pretty much cnc machines have you know came about and computer computer aided you know drawing and um and engineering um but that it's all about to go wild you know it's about to like make this crazy shift and it's like all the engineers and all the the ways that we've always built things are about to be completely obsolete, you know? And it's like, but we're still going to be building the same stuff. Like, do I really see it? Like, you know, like you said, do I, are, are like, I'm not, I'm not going to go that far into the future. You know, I'm, I'm still, as far as what we're kind of talking about here is where I'm still talking about kinetic energy guns, things that launch bullets. You know what I mean? And, you know, we, we talked, we mentioned and we went on the case telescope talk a bit, we're talking about stoner and, um, that really should have been the should be the future. Uh, I'll straight up say it. I, I think that that's my biggest problem with all with NGSAR and stuff like that is that they're not changing the case. They're not changing the the bullet enough. Yeah, it's polymer case. It's this. It's that. But they're not making enough of a change in a cartridge case to make a full next step in a firearm. Okay, um, and I think that especially. Yeah, especially anything that's vehicle mounted or drone, any, you know, by vehicle, I mean the mobile platform, which mobile platforms, we already know a drone, they got drones that are this big or up to whatever size. So mobile, mobile moving objects or stationary objects should be potentially electric driven guns. You know, they should not be gas powered, captured gas driven gas driven weapons so the fact that we aren't thinking about that in case telescope lends itself to an electric gun so perfectly because of the way that it operates you know so basically unmanned like unmanning Absolutely. a lot of that just yeah. like the drones mm -hmm. and, yeah and yeah um and, and of course the the sighting devices you heard about that shot that they had in israel where they they shot that uh i think it was iranian nuclear uh f physicist or something from like i don't know how far away but I, he was in a moving car and they freaking shot him with a you know, with a uh, probably a 50 cal or something like that. And it was all uh, all done over freaking, you know, I think there's a 1.4 second delay in just the communication network. So that gives you an idea of how calculated that shot had to be. And the guy was in a moving car. I think that the gun itself was stationary, but, you know, the, the idea that, that, I, that, the, I the, that idea, was just a drone. The idea that a guy has to sit beside, behind this thing anymore, we're not far away from... From that not being a thing, of course. Do I still think that guys are going to walk around with guns? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean. And so yeah, I mean, I think know. it'll it'll start. Yeah, I, d I don't doubt what you're saying. It, but it, you know, it'll start vehicle or fixed mount position absolutely. stuff. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. So it's like, okay. So I mean, the Mag White House. I mean, there's dudes on top of the White House with guns. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, that's but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like the idea of trying to adapt this gun to those platforms is kind of silly. The gun should probably be specifically built for that type of a environment. And I don't think that we're thinking about that enough with kind of some of the some of these changes that we're making. Um, but let's go back to like just not just the gun itself and how it's going to look or how a, a device that launches a bullet is going to you know work or whatever. But um, how stuff is designed and made, right? Like, f well, first of all, additive manufacturing is about to come completely wreck everything man you know yeah. what i mean like uh, the idea that my entire my you know kc my dad's entire shop is full of machines that are potentially going to be obsolete in like 10 years you know what i mean that i'm yeah you, you know so it's like everything is going to be potentially built that way you know you're not going to machine anything that's um, something i've never be, thought about not cut metal because yeah. like we like in the new building we just purchased a bunch of machines and like when does that when is that that kind of shift that we know there's shift. always levels to this i think when we think about 
these will be on vehicles or fixed mount first, these new guns. And what they'll do is a shitty job of adapting these to prove yep. out the new technology. And then eventually it'll be just adapting this existing gun to that technology will cost more than the guns that will design specifically for that. And that's a change you'll see. And I, I think it's going to be the same thing with additive manufacturing. Like it's there. I mean, we actually used it 10, 12 years ago to win the SOCOM machine gun silencer contract. Um, and that had to do with material. Uh, mm -hmm. Cutting that material was very difficult, and that mm -hmm. was a way to do it. Uh, but we are getting to where the machines are affordable, the production times are coming down. But it'll be, you know, you'll do the most complicated parts first or the parts that you could have never machined. Mm -hmm. And I think then, so you're going to see a gradual progression. I mean, when Trey and I die, there's probably still going to be machines on the floor cutting metal for some certain things. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, but, absolutely. You know, so I think it'll happen that way. You know, you'll see new things that you could have never done or things out of certain materials. And then it starts filtering down to where it's affordable enough, it's efficient enough to where even a simple part to machine is easier to make that way and it's more cost effective. It's kind of like, you know, like if you, if you talk to pilots, like a dude trying to go transition from flying an air, a, a fixed wing aircraft to a, to a rotary, to a helicopter, you know what I mean? It's like those mindsets are so completely different. It doesn't really translate like that. Yeah, and I think that design wise, like engineering for design is going to completely change instantly. And you'll have guys that do the old school stuff and you'll have guys that do this, I think, and gradually... You know, the cutting metal. That, that's what I'm away. trying to say is we really haven't experienced this generation of, of engineers that only think about an ad additive type thought process. Like, you know. Yeah, that you uh, can make anything. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I always go back to the Michelangelo, everything, you know, it's all in this block of aluminum. I just have to remove the parts that are, you know what I mean? It's like, that's, that's right. just how your how my brain, you know, works, whether it's an art piece or a, a gun part or whatever, you know, that that's just how that I've always thought about it. But when you start to think about it the other way, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to take, all, it's, it'll be a whole generation that's raised only thinking that way. And it'll be so foreign for them to the idea of, what do you mean you had a machine that, what? You know what I mean? It'll be like, you were already uh, extruding yeah, yeah, this yeah, to yeah. make billet, <laughs> idiot. Why didn't you yeah. just... Yeah, or yeah, it's like, why does it have all these flat surfaces? Or yeah, I think everything's going to look different. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, if you look at, so now we can kind of start to talk about this too. Is it's like, so that's one element. It's the additive manufacturing element. Though that's uh, that's building things in a way that you've never been able to build them. But now when you bring bring artificial intelligence into the design aspect of it and remove a person from even the design thing. You, if you have you seen like any of those parts that are that are you know that are designed with AI, they look very much like trees or root systems. You know what I mean? They're like very organic, um, and it's like how can I make a, like a one that comes to mind is it's a um, a rear suspension part for a motorcycle, and it's got all these little spindly pieces that deal with harmonics, and it, it looks very much like a like a tree. You know what I mean? Or a root system or something like that. It makes you you know I'm I'm not like. Uh, you know, uh, whatever I'd say I'm spiritual or whatever, but when you, I, uh, whenever I see stuff like that, it makes you just kind of think about like the design, the master designer of the, of the earth of the world that this is all, you know, uh, is, is all designed by, by, you know, whatever, whether it's a, a, you know, a God or a, a whatever, some master, master designer, you know what I mean? Uh, well, that's deep, but I think what you're saying is, yeah, if you didn't have any rules, mm -hmm. you know, and you didn't have limitations and parameters, how would you do things? And, that, and that's the way we like to try to design stuff now, but that's kind of artificial in the sense of, you know, we, we realize we do have to machine it or we have to make it. The limitations way. of it. But, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, uh, we're working on, um, uh, so we're using some additive manufacturing now for some of the gun stuff, and there's one part that I saw the other day they're working on, and it's to replace an existing part, mm -hmm. and we've got a new vendor that can do it out of the material that we want. And when I saw the first model of it, I was like, that looks ridiculous, and it looks fragile, and mm -hmm. why would you make the things this long? Mm -hmm. But in this process, like, that's correct, and it's not the way you would design it for other ways. Mm -hmm to manufacture whether it's a casting or a mem part or machining or anything else but yeah with that it's like the best way to do well it. there's there's two things going on here man and this is like this is like the whole shift i think that's going to happen not just the firearms industry is, is 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 a neat little microcosm of the, all the industries you know what i mean and you talk about the aerospace industry or automotive industry or whatever but the firearms industry is kind of in this microcosm one thing is is it is a protected industry in the United States, okay? So it is the only thing 
that we do not allow to be completely outsourced, that it's protected. Okay, so that's the only reason that you, the United States is still one of the best arms manufacturers and designers in the world is because we didn't allow that to go overseas. We protected that industry in the United States. Is medical the same way? I wonder. I don't know. I'm not, not sure. Yeah. Medical devices or anything. I don't no. Know. So it's like that's the only reason. It just kind of goes to show. Well, if we yeah, had, if we had protected this or protected that, we'd be building and designing the best of all these electronic components as well. So I think it's just a little bit of an example of man, maybe we shouldn't have out, allowed everything to be chased after having a new cheap iPhone or TV or whatever every year. It goes back to like, what do I really need type thing? But um, yeah, so just the fact that this is a, a protected industry. and But you talk about people. And when we keep talking about how important people are when in this mix, you know, whether it's Gene Stoner or the designer or the guy running the shop or running, you know, the machine or doing the design work or whatever. And those people are going to become removed from the process. <clears throat> the an additive machine does not need a bunch of people running it. You know what I mean? It's they need a people maintaining it and putting the powder in it and whatever else. Yeah, but I, it's not like you don't have to have a dude that's has twenty years experience in programming that machine to be able to walk up to it and learn how to use it. Okay. Yeah. And then secondly, you're gonna remove the designer. Okay. So everyone's like, oh man, freaking robots are gonna you we're not gonna have chefs or cheeseburgers. The most the most probably dangerous jobs that are going to get replaced is is medical we just talked about so anything because it's going to remove the liability of it that's going to all be replaced by robots and devices and um in manufacturing so engineers you know what i mean they're they're you're going to still need people to maintain and and basically maintain the equipment and design the equipment and and systems but as far as the actual engineering is going to be done by artificial intelligence yeah i bet that i mean well it's assisted to some degree now even with SolidWorks. yep but um yep. I, I mean i think by the time we see i don't know if you and i'll ever see that like oh, i do do mainstream no i well i don't think this i don't that's what i'm trying to say is i don't think the firearms and aerospace industry is mainstream i think it yeah. is at a higher level of hmm. of and, and yeah that's going to filter down into everything you know what i mean but i think you're going to see it here first in the defense industry yeah. maybe not with small arms but yeah certainly we already see it with aircraft you know, and, all you sorts know, of things yeah. bombs and things i mm. wonder if you know to me i've just never been in the mindset of robots are going to like replace people or all these jobs are going to be like it's still i believe it's going to require people to do a lot of the aspects like maybe it's just the creative aspect like right. i don't know but um I'm excited about that, but I don't have like a fear of it. Or I don't anything. have a fear, but I don't know. I'm not like saying machine, I have fear. Of like it. I'll continue to invest in current machines and stuff as long as it's necessary for us to produce stuff. And, you know, uh, we make money if, you know, th for the first time in my life, if we wake up in the flying cars in the driveway, then we'll just, you know, we'll ride off the machines and go blow them up with Tannerite. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so that's, that's, we we'll talk about the firearms. Obviously, um, you know, we kind of always talked about before, like if you took an AR-10. We're going deep space future, Jay. <laughs> Dude, I deep told you that. I told you the future was going to be. <laughs> Ball deep. burner 5,000. <laughs> future ain't what it used to be, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Party so. Party like it's 1999. Ooh, we miss you, Prince. Oh, uh, yeah, shout out to Prince. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, it, we always said that, like, if you took an AR-10 or whatever, you know, it, whatever gun that was designed, you know, designed even 70 years ago and put a modern optic on it, that you can go to town and do work with it. You know what I mean? So it's like, really, this gun is the same. It's been, or not even that much better than it's been for now we're talking about freaking 70, 65, 70 years, bro. Right? So yeah, I mean, incremental improvement. You're yeah, right. I mean, you no. think about in our lifetime, you and well, I was in my last year of high school. You were out of high school. The first time I saw a red, like there was the Armisen red dot. There's like the tritium powered thing, both eyes of them. But an aim point, it was the it was the aim point magazine article with Schwarzkopf with dudes in the desert. Ninety one mm -hmm. had aim point on top of the carrying handle mm -hmm. on the M4. That's the mm -hmm. first time I ever saw like a battery powered red dot. Aim point yeah. two thousand. Stoner had one that was a some kind of a. Um, projection you know lens type thing that he yeah. was messing with way back then but anyways what i'm saying is is like electro optics and and um site uh, target acquisition stuff is really what has propelled and 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 driven this type of weapon to where it is now and that's the one thing that changes yeah, I mean, and that there's always a new scope there's extended a new range i mean you, you think know, all that new scope stuff 
has been since this war. Yeah. Like 2001. Because yeah. think of what you guys were putting on your contract yeah, guns fixed, before that. Fixed 10 power. Yeah, fixed 10 power. You know what I mean? Yeah, what's, yeah. what's on? Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, like a, oh, that's got a variable. Yeah, that's like yeah. a three to eleven or some crap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like you, you look at that. You know what I mean? How inc- how insanely better modern optics yeah. are than and optics that just old. five years ago yeah. or ten years. So the op- and that's just optics. There's nothing really crazy in there. There's not anything electric in there. And then when you start to bring, uh, you know, electro optics and night vision and dynamic reticles. I think they call them disturbed reticles. Well, I think that's a terrible name. I'll say it here on freaking camera. Disturbed reticles. Stupid idea. What, what is dynamic. that? I don't even know what that is. Disturbed reticles, uh, you know, range, has range finding and, and moves the reticle based off automatically. Oh, okay. As, uh, oh, yeah. yeah but I've not heard that term. Disturbed reticle. I, I don't know. This be, sounds like a band name or something. Like that. Uh, <laughs> dynamic is a better word. Dynamic, dynamic is better. That's very Chris Costa. <laughs> <laughs> Triangle of power. <laughs> Triangle of power. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and then um, you know, uh, obviously night vision, lasers, um, range finders. Uh, I think some of the wildest stuff is being able to read wind. You know, uh, laser uh, technology that reads, for, reads wind all the way down to. For me, not trying to be on the cutting edge of technology, but doing long range shooting and shooting animals at long range. Wind is a bitch. That's the thing I'm most excited <laughs> about. Mm-hmm. Like I've got good thermal and night vision from you. I've got. You know, the Trigicon, like the Reap IR Reap I use yeah. all the time, which is awesome for me for pig hunting and stuff. It's compact, lightweight, mm-hmm. suits my needs fine. The thing that I need is to be able to read the wind at range very quickly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it, the, cause it takes me from shooting an animal at 700, 800, 900 to 1200, 1300. You mm-hmm. know, like that's a big difference. So we kind of talked about that before that whole mentality of a sniper that can do all that and do it in one shot and figure it, it all out and do all the methods. Like if you want to read the wind, that's like there's no way around it right now. It's, it's 30 years, 20 years experience out there doing it. Yeah. Like, no, they have a thing. You know what I mean? There's a thing, but um, yeah, it's coming. It's coming pretty quickly. Uh, but so now what we're talking about is you're taking this. It's kind of like what we were talking about, about the about the engineering and the, you know, all that stuff is you're replacing the, the high level of skill and training that it requires to do the job with this tool. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're making it to where anybody can pick up this tool and, and do work with it. You know, so like that, that money that I, that anybody um, spends on training or, or you know uh, cultivating a, a warfighter uh, is gonna is gonna go well, away. Well, yeah, I you mean, know? you know, when you're employing people, whether it's the government or private industry, it's like it, the the time is where it gets expensive. Like the training of these people, and then, you know, support staff and all these other things that a lot of that can go away. That, like that's the real. Yeah, what do they say? It's like I don't know. If I forget what it is, but it's like I, it's like ten million something like that. Like they talk about what it costs to, to train like a uh, a jet pilot or whatever compared mm. to a special operator, and it's like it's it's more to train a you know special forces guy than it is a, a freaking pilot of a freaking right. you know 100 million dollar freaking you know aircraft it's, it's or whatever crazy right yeah yeah so. and that number is probably old honestly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i'm making, probably making it up too anyway well i mean but think about it realistically like a pilot's pipeline is nowhere near of uh like a, one of these these tier one guys pipelines or even the just special operators pipeline like monetarily well, i mean so they have to do so many things no mm-hmm. those i mean again i don't i think that manned air, both air you're never going to see we're never going to build a new tank that people sit in we're never going to build any kind of a oh good i don't ever want to be in a tank oh, no way mm-hmm. or a no, like, cruising around y'all's property is fine but dude it, it, people are talking about us, talk about like th- like the only thing i could think of worse would be a submarine but like oh i would rather be in a sub hell mm-hmm. no, no i'd rather be in a no 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 but yeah those talk about like what badasses Back then, in those wars, to jump five, however many guys into a freaking steel freaking bubble and go into freaking battle and freaking go at it with a whole Fumes, other team, just sound. all of it, dude. I so just imagine loud, how it would smell oil. in there. Oh, oh man, uh, <laughs> smell. <laughs> smell like Trey's weekend panties. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, an aircraft because you're you've already exceeded the ability of a of a of a, of a vehicle to exceed the capabilities of of human a human can't live in it you know you'll mm-hmm. knock yourself out so i think i don't think we'll see another um manned uh you know f whatever you know f f20 that's cool f29. that's cool yeah. in 20 years from now the knight's arm at tank museum is going to be the, the yeah. manless or, uh, yeah the man-powered <laughs> yeah. tank so you're gonna have to rename it you, you mean know? people sat in these things <laughs> weird <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, that's yeah. I mean, it. You're right. It doesn't make any sense when you can have someone, you know, in Pensacola or somewhere, 
driving the the tanks. I mean, you already have it going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I think that the thing is, is now we're talking about all all that. I think that we really are ready for a material jump. You know, and um, there's a couple things going on that you've had composites kind of coming on. Um, you've obviously with additive, you're going to have some wild stuff. Um, a big one was um, like the idea of crystal growth, like where you would grow a part. You know what I mean? So that's a that's a thing, too. You know, like a pearl, you basically start a part real small and it actually grows itself with a crystal structure, you know, um, so that the, the part, you know makes itself so to speak and that there's something in the in the dna of the part where it grows in a certain structure and you and you can control that um so you're talking about huh. materials you know what i mean we're we, we're getting like some some material growth but i think we're really ready for a, a pretty paradigm shift in a big a big we're, we need we need we need better materials to be able to go where where, where we want to go with higher velocities where where, where if we want to extend the range and whatever of, of these devices, we need better a better material to build barrels out of. You know what I mean? And how's that? How is that going to be made? You know, it is interesting all those thoughts because then I just come back to like the simple part of writing the requirement. It's like, uh, well, w you want to shoot farther, so does that mean you need a new cartridge? Yeah. I mean, is it sights, other technology, you know, modifications to ammunition, you know, mm. barrel twists like we're working on, but, you know, probably being able to read wind like all these other things. I don't know. But, yeah, if you need barrel life. You need barrel life. New materials if we're firing mm. the same old I mean, velocity is always king, man, you know, M M yeah. MV squared, you know what I mean, whether it's rotational or directional velocity is king man so yeah, yeah faster 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 man faster better stronger <laughs> it's like <laughs> the Byron you man. and i <laughs> that's our album name hours <laughs> north all right so don't be don't be stealing that that's <laughs> trademarked <laughs> trademark <laughs> Right, right, right. Um, all right. Well, well. To to bring it back from deep space. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, you know yeah. what? What's in? What's yeah. in the, the near five future. years? Yeah. Okay. Ten so, years. Casey. Uh, yeah. Talk about Casey right now. So, obviously, we've been kind of, mm, you know, in the music world, they call it like woodshedding or whatever, where we've kind of been. Jay said, "Y'all been doing nothing." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. I haven't talked. About we got a new. Future. We got a new. We got a new album coming out. We, <laughs> 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 it's like Guns and Roses, you know, <laughs> Chinese democracy. whatever. Yeah, Chinese <laughs> democracy. Uh, no, seriously, you know, I mean, we. Um, it's hard. Like, if you have a product that number one is is good or good, you know, is it's successful, and then worse yet, people are buying it, so you have to make it because people, it's under contract. You don't really want to come out with iPhone thirteen when. You know what I mean? And the other thing is, I sure as ain't going to tell everyone about it. You know what I mean? I'm sure it's not going to freaking put it out on the commercial market or talk about it. You know what I mean? So, well, just tell us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say in the near future, you're going to see um, Knight's line um, hopefully shrink. We're going to have less SKUs, less products to build. And um, they're, we're not going to potentially have a commercial and military product line. We're going to have a product line that we build. And it's going to be the same same product line, and we're, we're not going to build stuff with mm, the thought that this has to be a commercial product, so it has to be cheaper or whatever. To, to to me, that's been a kind of a a stumbling block for us is that we can get lower costs in volume. So if I build just build one thing and build more of them, then I can get the cost down as opposed to well, I'm going to use a cheaper material or a cheaper process to build that part. So you guys aren't going to abandon the commercial market. You're just taking a different approach, a different to approach, completely different approach. But you know, yep. we talked about it earlier, and I think the demographic, you know, that that we're trying to focus on and serve now commercially is vastly different than when you and I were younger in into guns. Mm. You know, we had access to them, but I, you know, with silencers, you know, ten years, ten times as many people on silencers as ten years ago. I think you've got uh, people can afford your. How many now. AR-15s does does a dude want in his safe, dude? If one's not better or different than another, I don't care you know how many I got. I want a Knight's Armament one. Yeah. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if it was like, oh, dude, this is the one that freaking so and so freaking you know has some kind Saddam of historical. Hussein. <laughs> it's gold. Uh, yeah, but it's a special I, edition. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna ship out guns in cardboard boxes, <laughs> and you don't know what you get. <laughs> and you open it, and it's like, damn, another SR15, 16 inch. You know I mean? <laughs> Surprise! <Yeah. freaking. laughs> I'm gonna trademark that as well. That's hilarious. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I mean, I, I clearly have always sort of loved it. But I think um, I like that approach. But no, I think suppress. I, I don't think people can afford these. 20 years ago not that many people and i think there's way more people now who can well i think that everybody looks at it's like um all right i got freaking you know i got freaking whatever uh you know 10 shit box cars i'm gonna sell them all and buy a freaking buy a nice car you know what i mean so it's like it's kind of like a little bit more of the utilitarian look at it where you're not collecting something you don't want to save full of something but i want one tool one badass axe one badass knife one badass gun that i'm gonna actually use um and i think that's a personal thing that you know you kind of go through with growth of oh i gotta get them all i gotta have this i gotta say it's like man i don't i don't i really in life even it's like you want to try to move away from just stuff and the encumbrance of crap you know it's like you talking about those two guys that have a lot of things yeah like and, and it, I, yeah, i'm over it it's burdensome yeah. dude you know i'm over it um it's, true. it's whether it's my house or whether it's a collection of something like Recently, I freaking started. I just went just went on because I got on a Facebook page because I had a ton of Microtech knives. You know what I mean? A box full of freaking, and you know they're super valuable. You know what I mean? And then they just sit in a box. I don't enjoy them. You know what I mean? And um, so I started looking at them and and you know letting them go to somebody that'll appreciate them or 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 collecting something that I would appreciate or use. You know what I mean? And I'm you know I'm we've talked about it off camera, not so much on camera, but I'm super into these the old cars. You know what I mean? And they are. So such a maintenance nightmare, dude. Especially like flathead motors. You have got to start them. Um, mm. The seals and stuff aren't made for modern fuels. They take like this incredible amount of, of maintenance or whatever, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't like having any of that. Yeah. Well, I always see it and I see somebody has one and I want one. And I remember that one time I mm. had a classic car and I was like, mm. even even now, you know, like Thomas it's asking hard, dude. me. It's like, a lot of work. Like I don't have a giant garage here, but. Yeah. Well, you have a big garage. Yeah, just not. But there's not two full. or three cars in it, and I honestly don't even know what's down there. Yeah, like I know, I know. Well, I know two cars that are down there, mm-hmm. and then there's probably three, and I don't even know what it is. And and I don't even like to think about it because it's like, oh, I need to put that on the battery tender. I need to put air in tires. I need yeah. to go start it. I need to drive it. It's like, yeah. oh, I wish I just had one car. Well, I mean, so that's. I think the thing about guns is, is like. Yeah, I always said, you know, the Apple, uh, the AirPods or things or whatever, because it's like, I don't carry a gun, you know, typically on me, but I have guns around, you know yeah, what I mean? Dude. And I will on occasion misplace a, <laughs> a, in my, a pistols. I want to put those like air, air, the, oh, the, the Apple pods. Tell you where it is. Like, oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, that's where it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think that, you know, having a safe full of guns or whatever, it's like, um, yeah, you're worried about it. You're worried about they're going to get stolen. They're worried about um, blood, you, fire, you know, all, everything. all that stuff. So, but. I don't know. I think that, um, you know, and, and everybody also, I feel like that's this Americanism of building, wanting to build something like that's not a thing in, in, in Europe as much. You know what I mean? Like you buy a car and you leave it like the Americans buy a truck. And the first thing like, oh, shit, I'm going to put some rims on this. You know what I mean? You don't go buy a new Ferrari and like, yeah, this would look really killer with some freaking some new tiles. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I've never really been into that. Like the building I, thing. I, yeah, I don't. I've never built a house. I've never really built cars. Mm, I'm uh, into it. I only, with I'm my, my trucks, I only change the bumpers when I dent them or rip them off, like mm. on the farm or no. whatever. There's there's something satisfying about buying something brand new and taking it all the way apart, like before you even drive. That, that seems <laughs> yeah. stressful to me. It is. It is. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think that's what, that's one of the things about a night's rifle is it really was built not to do that too. In yeah. fact, everything's tuned away. And I think that that kind of like, there was this marketplace where, the gun became so st- specifically the five five six, not so much the seven six two area, but parts were interchangeable. The tolerances, the tolerancing was squared away, and manufacturers could build parts in different areas and put them together. A dude could put it together simply with minimal amount of tools in his garage and build, a, put together a gun. Not not build a gun, but put together, assemble a gun. And I think that that was a huge market for a long time, and that's what drove. And you even talk about just the rail system and putting different accessories on there. It's like the whole. Barbie doll, Mr. Potato oh, Head yeah, situation yeah, that saying. we were kind of driven for a long time of this whole like AR-15 customization situation. You well, know? well, what do you think? Yeah. Well, Jay, with, with the Knight's guns like this, like the SR-25, mm. whatever this model is on the table in front of us, mm. um, like that's an awesome gun. And you, you see, like I, I if you used it, I use yeah. it, I shoot with it. I don't have any that I want shooting. I don't even want to know what they're worth. Because right. I'm sure, like, if you told me now, I'd be like, oh, man, I'm not going to go shoot that thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but do most people, like, younger than me that have Knight's rifles, they buy them just to collect them, or are they using them, like, commercially? I will say now, because of how 
um, I guess unavailable they are, how hard it is to get them, the guys that are getting them are using them. Oh, they are. Um, That's at cool. least at least the people I follow who have them, because be, you can't you can't go buy five of them and hold on to them. Like right now, it's just not achievable unless you are a distributor. So, or so a dealer. people buy them knowing they're collectible, I, but they want them for the reasons that they're like workhorse. So I, it's that I, gun I, they want to go I, shoot. I feel it. like that, and that's the thing that we've seen is like within the crowd that does actually go out and shoot a three or 4,000 round course over a weekend, you know what I mean? That they shoot enough to actually appreciate what that gun is does different, whether it's yeah, the, softer shooting, the it's lighter 10%. weight, um, or that the parts last longer. I just I mean? talked to last week um, or last weekend when I was in Virginia, I just talked to somebody who uh, went to a class recently. The instructor was using a gun. Um, he ended up, this kid ended up buying that same gun. I won't say the company because they're not, we don't hit them. Um, and he bought that gun, went to another, another course. It broke down within the first, however long in the course, first schedule or like firing schedule in the mm-hmm. course. And he said, I was talking to him. He's like, I could have, I had the opportunity to buy a Knights. I could have bought a Knights and I wouldn't have had this problem. Like now he's out. He bought this instead of buying the Knights, which he felt like he should have in his gut but he's like oh but i shot this one i liked it whatever i went with it and he is kicking himself he's like i know if i bought the knights i wouldn't have had a problem mm. and now i can't go get it I w- yeah. well i would say that like there's you know this is kind of comes from like the car thing it's like when you put a car together it's like called the shakedown it's like something is not quite right you know what i mean and i think that's a thing you know with knights rifles we have developed a qc and inspection and testing process when we put a gun together all the way to make sure that it's gonna that it's gonna work, um, and there's a couple a couple things we do that are proprietary, um, and and obviously, the detail that we go to to make sure that the gas system is completely sealed so that you don't have leaks in the gas system. That's that's a huge area for for a failure point. You know what I mean? And also that when that gas system seals itself eventually because it does it carbons up that then the gun is overdriven and then you're going to break parts so that really is part of the secret sauce with knight's guns is the is the fact that the gas system is so is so sealed up and 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 thoughtful and that we can actually test that and we were talking about triggers earlier but every single gun that leaves the factory is trigger scanned um you know for that issue but yes a gun will leave your factory and inevitably it happens you know what i mean something's wrong or whatever i think it's how you handle that how you take care of it how you how you fix the problem um, you know, and, uh, but I, I think that's true too, is like, we were talking about that. Like you get a gun back and it's guys complaining about something you get it and you're like, there's like two nights parts on here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, they've changed all this crap and they wonder why it doesn't, you know, why they got a problem. And you're like, dude, you know, yeah. Freaking- well, there's a weird dichotomy with it too, because guns are kind of like you, like you said before, like a vehicle or like a, where you do, there is routine maintenance you have to do, but yeah. some people get so wrapped up in that that before they even buy a gun or a silencer or whatever, they'll complain and say, oh, well, I heard this one. Like, well, what about my what about my baffle stack? And what, what are you going to do for me when I shoot it out? It's like, mm. hey, man, go shoot it out. Like, mm-hmm. you won't. You yeah. can't. Oh, yeah. There was a big thing on the bol- our bolts for a while, you know, about dudes saying, well, if you break it, it's proprietary. Whatever. I was like, all right. First one of y'all that breaks one, I'll give you a free rifle. Yeah. <laughs> yet to freaking, you know, yeah. Yeah. yet to freaking. You <laughs> shooting 200 yeah. rounds a year isn't going to do well, it. You know, stuff ah. like that. In the well, you're talking about, okay, let's say ammo's, let's say it's 50 cents a round, right? right? And you're talking about freaking, I don't know, let's say 25, 50,000, 40,000 rounds. So you're talking $20,000 worth of ammo to yeah. break that gun. Yeah. <laughs> and you're well, worried about the $2,000 gun, you know what I mean? It's, well, it was speaking of the future, because I think some of the stuff we're encountering now that way it is like that and it is we kind of mature and grow and like the approach that we're trying to take to products we talked about the trigger and it's been a year of testing our mm-hmm. trigger uh once it was complete and so it makes you feel way better about releasing it knowing how to test it but you know what i hoped that for social media for instance we're able to reach our customers potential customers and customers instantly and what i hoped is we would overall get a more educated you know, consumer base, at least in social media. And I don't, I feel like that's not happening. It's, it's like, they just still the rumor. Nobody does research. Yeah. Maybe it's mm. hard to find. Cause I think like for the honey ba- badger with inst- for instance, when you were talking about the bolt, we've had, uh, several people saying, I think it's probably cause like Maxim defense makes a 
stock that looks like it, but it weighs mm-hmm. twice as much. Oh, it's yeah, got steel rods. And yeah, you're like, yeah, well, yeah. it's steel because it's, it's you know, stronger. developed for yeah. SOCOM. <laughs> for that. Like all, and, and that it's stronger. It's yeah. like, well, you could just design it correctly. And I'll have, I've had people several times at DMs that read this probably in Reddit or some, yeah, Josh Parker forum somewhere. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, those are flimsy aluminum mm-hmm. rails on the Honey Badger. And, you know, it can't be trusted for that much money. Why wouldn't you make them out of steel? steel yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, I own the company and anything like that that happens will come to my attention. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff happens when you make, mm-hmm. but I, that would be a design issue. And I'm like, I can tell you we've never had, had one break. Yeah. One break but, ever. Let's let's like, let's let's back so up a second. Why man. make it out of steel and make Let, it heavy? Let's talk about this. You know what I mean? We're talking about the future, right? So, do you know how much ammo our parents and we had the access to and could burn through Knob Creek, dude? You understand what that was? Yeah. In that that is gone. Right. That ain't that ain't gonna happen no more, dude. You know what I mean? And like the ammo situation and potential shortage and increase in prices drastically changed and will change the industry drastically yeah that sucks i mean you think you you and me both and and even i used to buy when i had my first range dude those guys would shoot 150 to 200,000 rounds through those miniguns in a three-day period bro i mean it's crazy but you know even personally i would buy pallets of ammo and that's what was in my garage and i might go you know i go to my range every weekend and if i went for two days i might shoot 10,000 rounds of ammo through yeah. some belt fits. Yeah. Right. And <coughs> like I was doing okay and it was a lot of money, but not a lot of money. No. You know, you're buying foreign surplus ammo a lot of times and it would be eight cents a round. Yeah. That's not a thing anymore. Dude. So we could just go yeah. blast. We could actually wear out barrels and machine right. guns. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, and the fact that you could buy a machine gun for, yeah. a, for a decent price, yeah. a belt fed machine gun, or you could, you know, make a post sample yeah. and shoot it and make a machine gun. Yeah. My, I mean, um, my M2 that I've got, well, I've got um, M2 transferable gun, a side plate gun. And I think I paid $3,000 mm-hmm. for it new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And ammo that I bought then is Greek ammo. And I bought, all of it that they had left, it was sixty nine cents a round. Yeah, 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 linked. yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's three it dollars, three dollars a round for freaking for fifty cal. If you're lucky, dude. Yeah, and this is linked. All I do is open the wooden crate, <laughs> the metal <laughs> tin. <laughs> I pull the <laughs> belt out, stick it in the gun, and go. And sixty nine cents a round. And the gun, you know, and that was a lot of money then too. But I loved shooting it. But the gun was like so big and heavy. It's like the tripod, the gun, the barrel, headspace, and timing. It's just not something that you shot every day. But I would shoot it like every month, and I would just I would shoot it until I, I was tired. I, so I think that let's you know trying to to, to to talk about that. It's like I think that's like the you know you know how I mean you always People talk about twenty twos. Man, I love me some twenty twos, dude. You know, yeah, what I mean? and it's ten dollars a box yeah, yeah, yeah. during yeah. COVID. So I think that like, well, but you know what I mean. That's that's all gonna, of us. I would yeah. say who I consider my peers, you, Chris Barrett, and all, who have had access to, to all the guns, yeah, yeah. all the machine guns, all the ammo. It was and whatever we shoot all the time. Frickin we all 22s. love 22. <laughs> we all love 22. Shout out to the 22s. Yeah. yeah. I, oh, man. Like the, the Smith & Wesson uh, M&P, you know, 15. I freaking Yeah, they're a little $400 burn, burn those things up, man. Yeah. I mean, I shoot that. I shoot me and my son are constantly uh, after that. You know what I mean? It's fun. You know? I've so got I think a $400 that, one with a $350 trigger in it. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it's the thing you shoot. Oh, man, I got into building um, I got into building 1022s for a while. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I you know, built $5,000 1022s, dude. <laughs> yeah. Fucking $1,000 shilling. Better. You know, and, and what's so crazy, you build one for you know, 400 bucks or whatever. And it shoots like just ever so slightly, <laughs> you know, bigger group than a freaking what? $2,000. To me, if it's reasonably accurate, like I like those little Smith and Wesson M M P 22 things yeah. for 400 bucks. And like, if it's reasonably accurate and then if you can get a good trigger in it, which that's an advantage over like those AR based. Who makes a good trigger for that? For that gun? You can put any AR trigger. Oh yeah. Right? Or at least also. the original one you can. Yeah. Huh. Did they change it to where you can't? No, we just shot a bunch in Virginia and it's the same huh. thing. Oh, I yeah. didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could put I one tra- of the, I, put, I had, you could put one of the M one ten triggers in it or something. Yeah. Shoot huh. better. You know. I mean, I don't know. So yeah, I think that that maybe is something we're gonna maybe see in in, in the industry is probably um twenty twos are probably gonna become more and more for well, you know for actually shooting and training. I think I mean, that, you know, you've been to Europe a lot too, and we know a lot of people there and in most of those trenches yeah. they can't own a lot of guns. Right. So their twenty two pistol is thirty five hundred dollars. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's like all they can have mm-hmm. three guns and they shoot it all the time. Well, well, I mean, have you uh like also, you know, so so go another level for, for training or whatever is like, man, 
virtual reality is getting pretty freaking have you played with like the quest 2 or whatever any of that stuff man and well, that's like a 400 it, dollar unit you know Aiden's what I mean? tried to teach me some and i'm like it just it's like you trying to teach your dad this. yeah but i mean i guess what i'm trying to say is like i feel like probably for a lot of actual muscle memory events of, of becoming a good shot or mm. tactical situations that that's that's it's just like the f1 like the 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 car dr drivers oh, they, they yeah. all train in a, in a simulator well yeah because so. it's so hard to do well i i think with the range like i see i just built a mini fix in two two three because i just built a 500 yard range here in new hampshire and believe it or not that's far in new hampshire mm -hmm. and but okay so that's not difficult to shoot with a six five so okay let's go Two two three. Then mm -hmm. let's go twenty two. Yeah, like start shooting a twenty two at two and three hundred mm -hmm. yards, and you can do a lot of training with that because you have to do all the things. You have to dial, or you have to have a reticle Actually, where you can hold. You have to. The wind is very important with a twenty two. Oh yeah. Um, it's always like we said, you know, Kelly Slater's from Florida or whatever, and we have oh, like yeah. the smallest waves in the freaking world. You know what I mean? But then here's the the best surfer that's ever freaking lived was grew up surfing these small waves, and it's like, well, if you can surf that, then you can freaking translate yeah, easy to, yeah, yeah yeah so i don't know i think that man i really the ammo thing is 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 it's a bummer it's, it's a bummer man. I, I was and, the, and just the lack of machine guns the ability that well, people can't just buy a machine gun you know i, I think I, it really screwed up yeah i mean the future for that i mean so the gun it's interesting when you and i were coming up the machine gun thing it was affordable they were available it mm -hmm. was a cool thing yeah. that we were all into yeah but now there's not as it's funny to talk about ammo pricing. He and I were talking last night, so to, to future past right now. Um, <laughs> we, we were when um, they had the PDW mm -hmm. and were pimping that. And I remember his, I was down there and talking to his dad. And I don't know, we were on the range shooting or we were looking at him in the bill, whatever. But it was the PDW. And I'm like, man, I want one of those. And he's like, I could probably get you one, but you could never afford the ammo. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Because Hornady was making the ammo. This, this, and this was incredibly expensive. But this will put it in perspective. I was like, really? How much is the ammo? And he's like, I have to buy a million rounds at a time or something. I was like, well, how much is it? He's like, eighty cents a round. <laughs> <laughs> and they, I mean, it was like saying twenty dollars. Yeah, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah. Now, I mean, you know, that's like a, it, we were talking about the three hundred blackout. That's my, kind of my problem with that gun is you just can't go out and buy. You know, ten or twenty cents around ammo. You know, uh, yeah, that sucks, man. So I think that that kind of comes down to probably maybe precision shooting. Um, you know, I, maybe I've always we'll thought that would become, become a thing more of a ammo thing. Price. Be, yeah, or uh, you know, you know how I am about. Yeah, I love me some cowboy guns. Love revolvers and freaking the idea that I, I don't have a you, you know a you Glock with fifteen rounds in it that I'm shooting a gun. Yeah, that, don't go. It, through it, it makes the experience ammo. you know longer. You're more concerned about your shot. You're not running around in your Spider Man yeah. pajamas. For, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even with AR-15s, you know that's one thing I like about the bolt guns because I, I was saying a couple years ago when it was probably the Hillary Trump election thing and it's like ammo prices spiking and it's like it used to be you couldn't shoot fifty cal that much or three thirty eight Lapua Magnum but there are more ranges being built and I was like. When it was three dollars to seven dollars a round, you're like, "Oh, I'm never going to shoot that." But now, it's like we used to go out, we shoot ARs all day, we shoot a thousand rounds. It only cost you a hundred and twenty dollars. So I'm like, for a hundred and twenty dollars shooting three thirty eight or something, it can be all day and you can have a great time, you know. Or you can go with six five. I mean, before but again, COVID, they, again, the, the, the problem that is having a range where you can go shoot at a thousand meters, right. or, you yeah. know, whatever. Like that, that's 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 a lot. That's an incredible luxury, you know, for that. A lot of people don't don't have a yeah, going to a range and shooting past a hundred meters. I wonder if it'll start happening though, because there's a lot more land in America than ammunition, apparently. Yeah. Mm. So I don't. Mm. I mean, no. For me, I, I just I don't have a huge chunk of land here, and I was able to put a five hundred yard range in it. I don't that's know. Nice. You got a ton, ton of, of steel on that. Yeah. Sorry, that's, that's awesome. We're going. We're going to probably triple the steel. <laughs> Because you know it's five hundred yards, so what do you do if we want right. to we want to practice dude, that, up for that, hunting, so, dude? We need to freaking have another freaking shoot, dude. We need to oh, do like the sounds to shoot. shoot, fucking brand new. We need oh. to do the future sounds to shoot. Uh, future I'm calling it out right now. <laughs> 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 I'm saying what that's what's up. That's what that's in the near future. We need to do a shoot. Let's I mean, do, we should do it at like events. Knob Creek or whatever, since they aren't you, you know doing it there. But I want to go somewhere like that. I want to drag some shit out, dude. That let's would be let's so drag fun. some cool shit out. Because you know? uh, uh, imagine how we could wow people now. Because you think we talk about uh, Matt Demolition Ranch and all mm -hmm. that. Like, Trey and I were doing that and not recording it. We were yeah. doing it because it was cool and fun. Not yeah. not, not to make yeah. money. We didn't even think about taking pictures of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's crazy. I know. Yeah. Future shoot. We, we future can do shoot. a future shoot. Future shoot. Well, future I think, shoot. too, future on the range. So what we do is we only have 500, so we just, we're going to get a lot more steel. But, you know, we got to get, like, two-inch targets. Yeah, there's some small ones out there, and like, it was cool. We, we were there yesterday filming stuff. Yeah, was, if, you're, awesome. if you're at the cabin at uh, 300, there's a there's a four-inch target. Well, you, it's yeah. hard to hit. You ever, like, <laughs> uh, you know, um, like those old videos that, uh, that Dylan, you know, made back in the day of shooting this freaking oh, quad fifties yeah. with, with, uh, you know, Out you imagine how, how party that was to have a freaking, cause they didn't have, you know, I mean, we were all airplanes. shooting then in these videos. We're, we're like, what? I <laughs> mean, I knew how to party. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like Trey and yeah. I party <laughs> and Motley Crue 1984 <laughs> party. <laughs> I was like, what? You know? And he was like all into like, you know, uh, video, I agree. Like videoing was a big deal even then. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's Those cool. videos were great. And I remember, yeah. too, they had RC cars or stuff they would run out in the desert and they'd yeah. all start shooting them from the yeah, helicopter yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a party. I, I say that's like, man, once you shoot a freaking minigun out of a helicopter, everything else kind of gets kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It really is. Like, as far as machine gunnery, you're like, oh, this is, like, I don't, I hate it, that, that term, I hate load magazines. I hate, lo- look at my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I ain't got thumbs to load magazines, <laughs> man. It. That's from loading magazines, dude. It's like that from doing that. You know what I mean? When yeah. You, you know, you do, I can remember like the. I remember when we were doing this, and the 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 HK designer oh. was down there, and he was make. I was I was not loading magazines. He's loading them too, and he's like, oh. "You load too." You know, yelling at me. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want my thumb hurts. You know. I yeah, can remember I so. shooting this gun, and then when we did the All American 2000, we were just all day long literally yeah isn't shoot, it great shoot. when people are all like oh anytime you need help testing something <laughs> yeah, oh, okay yeah. bro okay yeah. all right yeah, come on lasts, down to florida it lasts about an hour yeah i always say like if you're shooting experience that doesn't involve a bug sprayer full of water to cool the gun down you're not really shooting <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. so it's like yeah you can't get through the day oh. if you gotta let the gun cool especially in florida then everything never cools down you know i, I mean just thinking you know, back in the day, and we do some destructive testing and stuff now, but it's, it's a little more like regimented and mm. engineers run it. But like us back in the day, when we had to test something, we're trying to break it. It's just load up, <laughs> you know, and as fast as you can. You yeah. hate load mags. I don't want to shoot. Don't want to load mags. Mm. It's just, I think there's, I'd, I'd, I'd say, especially with suppressors, you just, you, we got a slave gun and you just slap it on there and just run, run about till it breaks. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, it's just expensive to do the ones you got to buy. <laughs> <sighs> well, hey, what are you going to – um, what else is in the future? It, it's uh, SR-15s, SR-25s. Yeah, 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 what yeah. about that SR-50? Is that going to be a future gun? Man, I wish. I would love to make that gun. You know what I mean? I'd love to I'd love to scale that gun Ooh. down. You know what I mean? Scale well, that down. If you guys down don't want to do – well, even in the 50, if you guys don't want to do it, let bear it. Let it be the <laughs> oh, man. M108. That would be so freaking – that would be such a coup if that happened. <laughs> 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 Me and Chris will probably have to wait till our daddies are dead. <laughs> the cooperative well, All right. Well, if they die before <laughs> us at the second funeral, I'm going to say, hey, guys, come here. <laughs> we'll talk to you all about a little project I've been thinking about. Uh, that would be yeah, – scale I love that, that thing gun. down. Yeah, that'd be cool as hell. I'd love to build that gun. Um. That would be. Sick. I'd like. I mean, obviously, you know, I would like to. Do, you know, we have so many new gun designs. I mean, I would. You know, I, I hope we we get to do an electric gun too. You know, um, but yeah, I'd love to do a a, com, a completely non AR based uh, bait gun. Or obviously, we probably have, uh, including the PDW, probably have six or seven eight designs that are completely oh, different. I would love for the. Mm-hmm. P, I think the PDW comes out now. It's mm-hmm. it's it hits. I mean, that thing is. I Again, mean, and so like that's what we were kind of talking about about ammo being so expensive. It was like, well, a crazy caliber, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's now like, it I doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You yeah, know all I mean? ammo is expensive. But yeah, because yeah. that gun, it's one of those I like to think. You know, sort of like the fix or the honey <coughs> badger in the terms of you can see it in a magazine or on a video, whatever. Mm-hmm. When you hold that gun, and it's like, oh my god, it's tiny. Oh, it weighs nothing. Oh, it shoots so good. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's just a whole nother experience. It's not just. It looks like an AR. It's not an AR. Yeah. No, it's very AK ish. Yeah. Um, so, <coughs> well, what, uh, I mean, what I, else? Yeah, I say like near future, I think you're going to see a consolidation of our product line. You're going to mm-hmm. see us building less products um, and hopefully more of them. Um, I think obviously they're going to be more expensive. Um, the, the, they are more expensive for us to make. They're harder for us to make. They're under demand from other customers. So, 
yeah, that sucks, and it is what it is, but we're not going to go after trying to build a rifle for a price point or a budget. Yeah, it, so, it is interesting know. to think about, and you can hear some of that noise, and you know, it's it's hard picking what to listen to. But He's it's like, like, imagine everyone right now listening, like, wait a second, the most expensive gun company yeah. in the world there's is going to be, be even be more fewer. expensive. Yeah, the price is going up, and there's going to be fewer. Okay. Yeah. But, no, no, I hopefully there'll be more of them. I, I, I love that, though, where it's like, well, why would you get that when you can get the whatever, Daniel Defense? Mm-hmm. Da, da, like, Never heard of oh, yeah. See, that's the thing. You're not our customer. No. We're not trying to sell one to you. No. Um, yeah. You Those know, are it's, the people it's, with it's, 10 a- you know, ARs. It's, it's like going to the McLaren dealer, dealership and then saying, oh, I can get a Tesla that's 0 to 60 in 1.9 well, seconds for yeah. half the price. Yeah, but it's how you look in it. You know? <laughs> I don't know. The new, the new Corvette's kind of cool, but yeah, it's a Corvette. Oh, uh, I know. Yeah. I'm, every time I see one, I'm like, oh my God, then I'm like, that's yeah. a Corvette. So I was like, I, that, I feel that way about like almost all Porsches. They're like, man, that's a cool car for your wife or your wife's girlfriend or your girlfriend's <laughs> wife or whatever. You know what I mean? But you don't buy one of those for yourself. You know what I mean? And then Teslas just look like even worse Porsches. <laughs> you know, like, can you make it even more roundier and, <laughs> you know, like more girly? You know, I mean, I'd hate the way they look, but. They're freaking uh, so bad. Yeah, you know, two second cars or whatever. But because you know, I wanted the one. What's is it the Y or whatever the really ugly one that has like mm-hmm. the going doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it just happens that like here in town, I got the, the had the Model S and mm-hmm. I just got it because I just wanted to experience like yeah, the electric me too. car. Me too. I ordered one. I, I don't. Have, I don't know if I'm gonna accept it. And I keep going on those forums and hearing like all these horror stories about you know. Uh, getting a flat tire and having to wait like two years to get your flat tire oh, changed. Yeah, I thought you were going to say like, yeah. yeah, you blow the engine and oil comes up through the <laughs> and bend it and burns your balls. It's not funny. Sure. <laughs> I told you that in confidence. <laughs> what? I was talking about Jay's experience. Yeah, yeah. Milf chasing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think that, I don't know, I would love to kind of, you know, the accessory market was something we were so heavily into and it just got so... Uh, just so so many other people got into it you know what i mean yeah. and we and we kind of escaped it or got out of it so i would i would you know i would like to maybe see us but i, I don't necessarily see that happen and i don't see us making a big push to do accessories again any well, any time oh really yeah well you guys do you think you guys on like the thermal night vision side where you guys start to do like uh maybe consumer based ones or smaller or handheld or yeah oh yeah i mean that- obviously again you know i've i've, I've, I've talked about that we've we're we're in the middle of a you know a project for a, a digital uh, night vision device, and it has been probably the most humbling experience I have ever been through in my life as far as to design and birth a product. Like you're like, man, I'm freaking nighttime and coming with such badasses, and then you're like, oh shit, <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? It's like that whole like, if it was easy, dude, everybody be doing it. You know what I mean? So you know, niches, that whole idea of you finding something you're you're good at. And like owning that space in the market, yeah. you know, but trying to be the best at everything, it's, a, it's, it's just, I don't, that, that, it makes you, it's going to compromise some, some part of your product, you know what I mean? And we found for forever, you know what I mean? Our, our, I feel like our 762 line is and has been the best in the world. Um, and they've been tested all over the world and adopted all over the world because they are the best in the world. But it's taken a while for our 556 five, guns to reach that same that same plateau of, of adoption you know what i mean i think we yeah, finally a lot, a lot are starting more to see noise that. in that space and it's the barrier to more entry conti- yeah for companies yeah it's easier yeah. yeah so so i think that's the thing is before i would say m- so much more of our market was commercial and um you know we're finally at a point where we're seeing enough prolification in the in the military market for our 556 line that it'll you know allow us to to build more of them to build them more specific for you know build a gun and 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 then that's what's going to be available commercially or whatever but yeah i think that for the first time we kind of like we could have not made it you know what i mean like the if this you know like when the csas happened and they were going to replace it with the hk and we we weren't not going to have an m110 anymore and that all went away with the 65 and we're still updating and upgrading the m110s and managed to stay in the m110 game just because of the six the caliber oh, so change that, so speaking of future that's what it'll be the, the m110s are becoming 65 yeah mm-hmm. oh. so we're doing you know conversion kits and those are going back out in the field or whatever so that kept us in the in the in the m110 game but we could have been like you know what I mean? We could have been out of freaking business. You know what I mean? For the freaking for the M110, you know, really closely, and been, huh. you know, replaced with the freaking with the HK gun, which it is never going to be as accurate as our gun, yeah. um, and will never fit that pre- precision role. Um, so I feel like, 
you know, there's like, no matter, it's like being on top of the freaking mountain. Like there's always somebody trying to freaking push you off that sucker. You know what I mean? You always Windy fighting. At the top. You are always fighting for that spot. And it's like really easy to kind of get knocked off the top or do you want to make the effort to go climb back up there again in some place? Or do you want to go do something else? Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel like we're in a comfortable position right now with both our five, five, six and seven, six, two line where we have enough business, where we have enough contracts that we're here to freaking, we're here, man. We're going to stay. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so excited to hear. What yeah. about you, man? You got any future questions for we? <laughs> no, no future Real questions. No? I just You got no. nothing. You're not going to add <laughs> shit to this. They haven't done anything in a while. I'll just, like, <laughs> I'll just let them That's figure it out. <laughs> oh, you said that. I was like, bitch, I'm going to come on there on TV and talk you? about this. Like this. When is I was like, North that's North when North. I picked up the phone. I'm like, Kevin, yeah. I yeah. am coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what he said is, I got some shit got, to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll take responsibility yeah. for it. Uh, train night coming up. It's, it's facts. It's fact. You call me out. I'm like, okay, all right, all right. We'll see what's going on. Um, but but yeah, nothing from uh, perspective of like your age demographic and guys that are cloners, fans of Knights Armament. Like, what 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 the people wanting to see in the future? I mean, the things that that Trace talked about that we've started to see the little bits of, um, like the night vision, the things like that. Um, everything that Knights has done already, people know what caliber it is. Um, no pun intended. They just they know what the product is. So personally, I'm excited to see that kind of stuff. Um, the guns will always be interesting, and I think mm -hmm. people will always have faith in the guns. And I think, like you said, there's a, a few companies that are doing night vision specifically that everyone knows where they're at. So mm -hmm. it'll be cool to see a company. Yeah, like I don't. Knights. I don't. I don't know that I, that stuff is never. I don't think that ever stuff is going to be. At a price, I don't think we'll have a product that's at a price point where you're going to see that stuff in a commercial market. You know what I mean? No, yeah, no, it sucks. But it's just. Well, I even think around ten grand because I tell you, even yesterday I had. So I have for a couple of years now. I've had the Reap IR and the, is it Envision Halo fifty or something? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like every couple of years, I get another piece of like mm -hmm. thermal or mm -hmm. night vision to try. Yeah. And, yep. Um, well, that's the, again, it's a very technology driven thing. You can kind of look at basically TVs and how TVs. The displays and oh it's 4k it's 8k or whatever that same thing happens in both the displays and sensors mm -hmm. every so many years and we're about to reach kind of a plateau for battery life as far as the the, the quality of both the display and the sensor so the next generation oh, without making it more efficient or a different you, don't, you can't source. you can't have a you can't have a regular battery power so we're right about at a sweet spot for digital devices to where they're about it's going to be you know they, every year there's a, there's a new tv a new whatever so that we're kind of about to reach a plateau now you haven't seen any of those yet but this next generation of of digital devices is going to be probably about as good as they're going to get for a minute well, man you know? i i don't know i think i mean you i'm sure both of you probably know way more than me but it, just like silencers have become so prolific people with thermal and night vision in the commercial market that just pig hunt and have it mm -hmm. recreationally is like 10 times what it was five years no, ago. No, you're right. And I, yeah, you're I right. even had, so my buddy Ben needs to get my truck coming. Uh, he called me yesterday and asked me what thermal he should he get. He should buy. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like, well, you know, he's like, well, what do you use most? And I said, well, you know, I've got these and, and I don't know. You should talk to th this guy. He uses mm -hmm. them way more than me and he sells them and he sells all the ones and he can tell you the one. He's like, what do you use most? And I said, the Reap IR, the small one on my Honey Badger. And I mm -hmm. said, the bigger one's better for all this stuff, but I said I like with it being compact and lightweight. I use it a lot more, and and he's like, "All right, well, how much is that?" And I said, "I don't know. I think it's like seventy five hundred dollars, a lot of money." He's like, "Oh, okay, yeah." No problem. And, and I yeah. think those stay sold out a lot. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people, I mean, there is a pretty um, high price. I would point. I would say this is that there is a technology that's emerging that is a very affordable. That's probably it's completely different um, technology that is ex, it's very but, inexpensive that you know, you're going to see probably pretty shortly. Well, I think if you're SIG, you have to have that. I think if you're Knight's Armament mm. and, and it's a great technology, you could probably sell however many at $7,000. Well, think about it right no, now. I, what I'm trying to say is it's going to be probably like a two or 3,000 device that has that, that kind of capability. And it's, but it's a completely different technology. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty close to being out there. You know what I mean? Right now, people are already comfortable with spending ten to $12,000 on a, on last gen technology yeah on, on I, that's like what that. that's that, that's part about that that sucks for me is it's like damn especially because when the new one comes out it's not just like a little better it's like man this thing sucks you know what i mean <laughs> that I, I would say this we were talking about like 
the whole thing of call, what have you done lately or whatever. It's like, I will say, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> <laughs> I think we got a podcast shirt. <laughs> K-A-J. K-A-C. What, what have you done lately? lately? <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Uh, I would say. It's Trey. <laughs> the ball burner 5,000. <laughs> I would say I I I I, I would hope um, that we're going to be able to drop some some of our new silencers here within the next probably three years or something like that. And oh, that's, that's awesome! It's yeah, going to be badass. That's like awesome. you I figure, if I'm going to make something that's, or if I we I say I, it's Knight's Armor Company. Um, I'm going to make something generationally better than this. Then it's going to be badass. That's awesome. You know what I mean? And, and you know, and you're going to be great. able to buy them and everything. So I would say probably. The guns are going to be very similar to what you kind of see, but probably what we're making for a military thing. But our silencers that are going to come out probably within the next three years are going to be, you know, cutting edge. And I'm, you know, excited for that. I want to, you know, get to that point. But it's also like you got to get through the contract so that good. we're building right mm-hmm. now. You got to get through this. You got to get through the supply chain issues, all the shit that's going on. So tough time to do new stuff now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, especially when you're sold out of what you're making, you know. Yeah, it makes it hard when you have that back order want to jump on some new stuff. Yeah. But, man, yeah. I think th- I think that's it. That's I it. think I got to take you to the airport. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, well, it's been awesome. Yeah. It's cool chat. It is. And, and I love you and I've missed you. And yeah. Glad things are good. Yeah. It's overdue visit, man. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And glad yeah, I need, you're doing I, good. Thank you. I need to yep. bring all the idiots down there. They ask me constantly about Big coming time. to see the museum mm-hmm. and everything. Big time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we we need to Disney World of Guns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's worth it. Like I need. I gotta take all y'all down there just to see the museum. Yeah. I mean, it, it'll. I mean, it it still blows my mind. It still blows my mind, dude. Well, because yeah, most no. of us have been to the other the other ones, quote unquote, like Springfield and Browning, and obviously those are not. I mean, all of that is cool. This is just. So it's a little like for me, it's overwhelming. You know what I mean? It is. Yeah. 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 It's a much. But yeah, anytime, dude. You're always invited. Well, well, we yeah. got to do that. We'll show you what I've been doing lately. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This looks chill and relaxed and trust me it is it's not a lot of work we get paid a ton of money for it like this is where we make primary income is doing this podcast so please don't leave comments don't subscribe don't share it definitely don't leave a review don't tell anybody that this is a podcast and don't tell them to watch please honestly just stop listening stop watching don't buy any of our clothes or our guns just please don't this podcast this makes all the money Just don't watch.